In this quick start video, we're going to take a look at some basic mixing techniques. I've got the mix console in my lower zone. Now to start with, I'm going to this red fader, which is my master output fader. The first thing I wanna do is put a limiter over the top of that. So I'm going to the inserts tab, and in the first available slot, I'm typing in brick wall, and you can see that you can search for specific inserts or effects. Adding a brick wall limiter is the same as adding a brick wall to the output level of our track. So we can't go past that brick wall with the volume, which means we're not going to blow up anyone's stereo when we're playing it back to them outside of our environment. I'm color coding my tracks so it's easier to see the difference between them. On the left hand side, I've got my two acoustic tracks. Now they're set to reasonably the same level. They're recorded at different times, so the volume's a little bit different. I'm holding down shift to select both of them and, oh, whoops, I've accidentally clicked on the wrong area and altered the volume of the fader. That's okay because we've now got an undo and redo function inside of Cubase. So I can always go back and amend any mistakes that I make. With both tracks highlighted, I'm right mouse clicking, selecting add group channel to selected tracks and I'm naming it. Now I've got a new group channel, which is this blue fader. The blue fader will control the volume of both the acoustic tracks. And you'll notice it's also given me a new track up in the project window. Now if I right mouse click on this new track, I can load another track preset. So this is an important part of mixing if you're starting out. Take advantage of the many presets that come included in the package. Once we've added the track preset, the sound's completely changed and we can use the fader to mix it into an appropriate level. Those presets have added a reverb over the top of the acoustic guitar channel, but I can now send that group signal to another effects channel by right mouse clicking and adding an effects track. If I know what effect I'm adding, I can name it. If I go over to the effects slot, I can search for an insert or an effect. If I know what I'm after, I can use the quick search function to find it quickly. Once I hit add track, I've got a new effects channel up with the VST amp rack inserted over the channel and you can see that on the insert tab. But down the bottom, we've got the sends tab and this will control how much of the signal from that group track we send to this new effects channel which has the VST amp rack loaded. I'm going up to the preset tab to try and find a preset. Like I said, presets are everywhere in Cubase. Use them. Once I find a preset, then once again, it's going back and checking the volume. In both the mix console and the project window, each track will have an E button. When you click on this button, you access the all important channel overview window. The channel overview window gives us access to really important mix elements. At the moment, I'm searching for a preset in the channel strip that will make this drum track just sound a little bit fatter. Once again, presets are a great place to start because they're developed by world famous audio engineers. Channel strip presets are combinations of things like important tools, dynamic processing to help us control the level of our sound, even down to an EQ setting. But nothing is set. We can then go and edit our own settings and save them so we can further shape our own sound. Mixing is all about creating a large sonic picture. So it's not just about soloing particular tracks. It's about seeing how well they go together. One of the hardest things in a mix is controlling the low end. And there's quite a bit of it in this track. I really like this bass line. The only problem is it's hogging or stealing a lot of the low end from other instruments. So I've gone back to the channel strip and I'm searching for a synth channel strip that's going to control the level of it and keep it contained within a specific frequency spectrum. Now you can see that frequency spectrum on the EQ tab and you can make further changes if you think you need to. You'll notice that I use the red solo button and the yellow mute button a lot to compare elements of the mix together. The low end and the groove is really important, but now it's time to focus on adding some atmosphere and this synth pad gives us atmosphere. Mixing is not just about level or EQ or compression and dynamics. It's also about using creative inserts to make sure we're taking advantage of the space that we have between the left and the right channel. I've gone to the inserts and I've added the auto panner and now have a listen to the pad. The pad is providing us with some really nice atmosphere and now we're giving it the space and the movement and its own place in the mix. Go through the presets or play around with the parameters until you find something that works for you. 
Now I'm just going to click on the E button again and check my EQ. Instead of going to the channel strip and loading a channel strip preset, I'm going to the EQ preset and I'm finding a preset that's going to work for this sound. This EQ setting has removed some of the low end and it's added some high end. So now I can move the level up and it's even got more of a defined place inside of the mix. There's a global control for all of the mute and solo buttons. And when I unmute all of the channels, I can hear all of the channels that I recorded. The only problem with that is that that hook now sounds quite monotonous to me. Mixing is about making sure the elements or the parts in your mix have maximum impact. I'm selecting the mute tool and I'm muting some of these events. Now we've got space. And when the hook comes in, it's got more impact. Another way of controlling level or creating space is to automate levels. We can click on the R button on a track to turn on the automation. You can use the arrow tool or even the draw tool to draw in important information points. We can edit them. Now when we hit play, Cubase will read that automation data that we've just drawn in and the fader will move and follow that automation data. It's too much, but that's okay because we can edit the automation points. Automation is a really precise way of controlling a whole lot of mixed data and information on all of the tracks in our project. I've only got two hands, so I can't do everything in real time. Once we're finished with the first basic mix, we can click on the E button to get the channel overview of our master output. I've gone back up to the channel strip presets to load an audio engineer's preset and that will give me a rough idea of what I should have on the master channel of my mix. I can compare a number of different presets until I find one that I'm happy with. You should always check your master settings on different places in your project because your project might have different sections that have different dynamic levels. Mixing is not about getting it right the first time, but it's important to make sure you can take your mix and check it in different environments. In the next video, we're going to look at exporting this basic mix down so you can share it with the world, play it in your car, or share it with your friends and family. Catch you in the next video.